Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secret hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may truly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here our Lord Jesus Christ saith, That is, love thy, love thy God with all thy heart, with thy soul, with thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high. Glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, we pray thee that thy grace may always proceed and follow us, and make us continually to be given to all good works, that Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the hearing of God's holy word. First reading is from chapter 23 of Job, verses 1 through 9 and 16 through 17. Job said, Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I... Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No, but he would give heed to me. There an upright person could reason with him, and I should be acquitted forever by my judge." If I go forward, he is not there, or backward. I cannot perceive him. On the left, he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in darkness, and thick darkness would cover my face. The word of the Lord. Psalm today is Psalm 22, verses 1 through 14. 15 will read responsively, breaking at the asterisk. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. Yet you are the Holy One. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They cried out to you and were delivered. But as for me, I am a worm and no man. All, all who see me laugh me to scorn. He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. 
Many young bulls encircle me. They open wide their jaws at me. I am poured out like water. My heart with breasts melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a pot shirt. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from the marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to the help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will, it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but, for, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold. Now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes life reaches a Job 23 stage. We've heard of the five stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. I'm not sure if Job, the Job 23 stage fits into that paradigm or not, but I do know that it's a reality 
that many face. You get to that Job 23 stage when you've experienced a significant loss in your life. It's when those feelings of grief are heavy, pressing down upon you, as a person's hand might be pressed down upon one's shoulders. It's that stage when your complaint, the injustice you've identified, which you believe with all of your being, with all of your heart and your soul, is just plain wrong. It's that stage where that complaint has grown bitter. Job, in our first reading this morning, says it's the day. Today, this day, is when my complaint has grown bitter. And I want someone to do something about it. His false friend, Eliphaz, has just concluded his soliloquy. And with friends like Eliphaz, who needs enemies? And Eliphaz's philosophy, the only reason why a person would be in such great misery as Job is now, is due to that person's wrong choices. You see, Eliphaz believes that a person's fate is entirely and wholly wrapped up in personal responsibility. And that's why he blames Job. It's you, Job, who's failed God. It's you, Job, who's insulted the divine. You got the big guy in the skies, uh, you got the big guy in the sky's bad side. And now, Job, you've got to pay the piper. You've got to pay the price. For someone like Eliphaz, God is not someone who delights in human beings. <laughs> God isn't someone who really wants to be with humans. No, God is just some kind of babysitter in the sky. He intervenes only to punish people when they misbehave. Job is smarter than that. His faith in God is too mature to fall for that misguided folk theology. He knows that he's walked with integrity before God, before his life fell apart. Job knows that it's not sin or some kind of major failure in his life that's caused all these terrible things to happen to him. He rejects what Eliphaz is offering. But that still doesn't take away that bitterness. Perhaps it's increased the bitterness. It's magnified the injustice of it all. I didn't do anything wrong, and yet I'm still being punished. My health is gone. My family is destroyed. The only, identify, the only identity I have left, it seems, is suffering. I mean, Job wasn't perfect, granted, but he was faithful. He was upright. He did the right thing, and he worshiped God regularly. And now, he's suffering. So Job imagines this form, a place like a courtroom where he could go to be heard. God would be there, and I'd have my place and my space to give my best arguments for why all this stuff that's happened to me is just plain wrong. Why the suffering I'm going through is unjust. You see, that's what Job yearns for. And it's understandable because that's what any person who goes through such great suffering really does desire. They want a voice. They want a place and a space where someone will listen to them. But what does Job get? He gets silence. As Shusaka Endu writes in his impactful novel, Silence. Lord, why are, you, why are you silent? Why are you always silent? These questions were posed by the main character in the story. After he had become demoralized by the seeming indifference that God had displayed with the suffering he had experienced as a priest on the mission field. And we see this in Job as well. According to Job, God is silent because God is not there. I go forward, he's not there. Backward, I can't perceive him. Left, he hides from me. And, and, and I, when I go to the right, I cannot see him. This disorientation that comes with suffering is paralyzing. Where's truth? 
Where's justice? The silent God is there too in the 22nd Psalm. It's the voice of the one crying out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? I cry in the daytime, but you don't answer. You're silent. You may have been that God who rested on the seventh day of creation. And you may be the God who promises to lead his followers into true rest. But you failed to give me any rest, any satisfaction for the grief and pain that envelops my soul. This, my friend, is a real place. There's no right advice or inspirational jargon that can make it any better. This is not only Job's experience, it's also the experience we see depicted in the book and subsequent film, Silence. And it's also Jesus' experience as well. You see, Psalm 22 is all about Jesus on the cross. If you remember the opening words of this psalm, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Are the very words said by Jesus as he was dying on the cross, then kudos to you. Treat yourself to something really good today because you deserve it. Jesus does make this statement on the cross because he's dropping a clue on us. We are to understand that what he's experiencing on the cross is what is written right there in this very ancient psalm. Jesus is telling us, this is how I feel. Jesus feels as though his father has abandoned him that his father is far away from him. In fact, his father is somewhat dismissive of all the cries of his pain. He feels as though his father doesn't answer him, and that that appealing to him results in no rest, no resolution of his suffering. He goes on as Psalm 22 goes on to feel as though he's being poured out like water, that all his bones are at a joint, that his heart is melting, it's like, it's like melting wax. This testimony by Jesus, in the midst of incredible suffering, concludes with his father laying him in the dust of the grave. And we know that Jesus dies and that he's laid in the grave on that holy Friday and stays there through that holy Saturday. And at times... That's how our lives are. They're filled with a coldness of loss, of suffering. The what I like to call cross days. Not only because such loss and grief make you cross, but they resemble that suffering on the cross. Our speaker of the clergy conference this past week called the last 18 months of dealing with COVID and the grief of loss that has come from that pandemic. She called a Holy Saturday experience. It was on Holy Saturday when Jesus Jesus had died and all hope seemed lost. So that's a very real place to be. We also know as Christians, the other side of that equation. It's the reason why we now call the most terrible day in human history, the day that Jesus died, a good Friday. It's the same reason why we now take one of the most horrible symbols in all of human history, the Roman cross, we wear it around our necks, and we nail it to our walls. Jesus didn't merely suffer. He didn't merely die. He was also resurrected and glorified. But despite the feeling, the Father never left the Son. The Father was with him through it all. It was the Father who raised the Son from death. So I must confess this morning, I don't know the real reason for suffering. And I don't think anyone else knows it either. There are certain things that God has not revealed to us as of yet. But what I do know 
is what God provides us as we move through suffering. He gives us himself. As the writer of the Hebrews tells us, we don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. It's Jesus who's been tested. It's Jesus who's been through it all, as his testimony in Psalm 22 demonstrates. So let us do as Hebrews encourages us. Let us come to the throne of grace with boldness. Let us receive the grace and the mercy our Lord offers us in a time of great need. You might be sitting there this morning and you might be saying, well, I'm not suffering. <laughs> I haven't experienced a great loss. In fact, my life is fantastic. I hope that keeps going for you. But part of what we do in church is preparation. Being formed by God's word is gaining the skills that are necessary for facing certain things in life. There's certain things in life when they come. So keep praying, as our colleague does this morning, for the grace of God. The grace of God may always proceed and follow you. When those storm clouds of life start gathering, and they will sooner or later, remember that part of that awesome grace that God gives to us, that awesome grace, is that you have access to a great high priest who's walked in your shoes. Remember that when life feels as if its jaws open, open wide at you, and it's like a ravening and roaring lion. Remember to approach the throne of grace with boldness and to receive the mercy and grace of the God who hasn't abandoned you, but is right there with you by your side. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us continue our worship service this morning by standing. And let us reaffirm our incredible faith and our graceful God in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 327. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us and of Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together were worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Prayers of the people. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto the divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We pray for our clergy, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Paulson, our bishop, James, our rector, James, our deacon, 
Edward Robert Wallace and Stephen, bishops retired. Jack, Kay, and Dwight, clergy retired. We pray for our lay ministers, especially Kathy, Olivia, Emma, and Mary, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern our, or hold authority, especially Joe, our president, Kevin, our governor, Bria, our mayor. We pray for those who are ill or recovering. JL, Mary, Leo, Chad, Gage, Bibi, Stephanie, Jason, Phil, Claire, Sarah, Betsy, Evelyn, Barb, Sally, Kathy, Jim, Jane, Vincent, Reggie, Jonah, Henry, Jim, Bobby, Mana, Sandra, David, Betty, Ramona. Pray for those who are in nursing care. Mike, Lavinia, Ina, Kay, Thelma, Christopher, Patsy. Pray for all members of the armed forces, especially Heath, Matthew, Brock, Stephen, Tyler, Greg, Brandon, Lane, Riley, Brooklyn, David, Gina, Schaefer, Dane, Kate, Noah, Emma, Russell, Oscar. We pray for those in need, sorrow, adversity, or other special circumstances. Betty, Ruth, Olive. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the diocesan seminarians, Iona School of Formation and Aspirancy Program. Those who have died, Tom. We offer special thanksgiving for Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy holy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness, all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people, to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy work, whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. John and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, whoever's great mercy the promise of forgiveness of sins, to all those with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, Pardon the living you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all those who truly turn to him. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand.
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here this morning. And be seated on this 12th Sunday, 20th Sunday, after Pentecost, number 20. You can, of course, see in your uh, bulletin insert there all our announcements there for you. Of course, our Realm app update. Uh, still working on that. Friday, October the 29th from 6 to 9 p.m. in the parish hall. Save that date. And that time will be with us for Fright Night and joining our youth. And you can see more information about that. Also, this Friday, join Bob. Bob's going to be there, right? Bob's always there for the men's griller. I love Bob. He's always there for the men's griller. So join Bob for the men's griller. That takes place this Friday at 6.30 p.m. Of course, in the kitchen patio area. Uh, it's a great men's group. And we always have a fantastic time grilling the steaks and being there for that. You can see more information about the crop walk there. This happens next Sunday. Next Sunday is the crop walk. And speaking of which, I think James is going to give us an announcement about that. Yeah, this morning before coming to church, I was looking at the <laughs> Channel 5 weather. And after the storms today, so be ready for that. Uh, looks like some gorgeous weather from Tuesday onward, high of 72 and sunshine. What a great day for, for the crop walk. So come on out if you can, Sunday at 2 o'clock or start at 2 o'clock. Uh, a walk uh, to, to raise awareness and funds to feed hungry people, and the weather will be gorgeous. So come on out to Andrews Park Sunday. Okay. Thank you so much, Deacon James. Crop Rock this Sunday. Just a few more announcements for you. This Thursday here at the church will be the funeral service for Mike Buckwald. Mike was a uh, professor at OU, and so we'll be, uh, um, again, uh, thinking about his life and also offering him back over to the Lord and it's his funeral service from Mike Buckwall this Thursday at 2 p.m. here in the church. And also be, be in prayer for his widow, Kathy, as well, and the entire family, uh, the Buckwald family. I also sent around this past week a letter addressing our latest COVID safety protocols. And so if you wouldn't mind, please uh, reading that letter uh, that were sent to your home, as well as, I believe, email as well. And so please read that, uh, that pastoral letter from, from me about COVID-19. And then finally, this past uh, week, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I had the opportunity to go to St. Crispin's for the very first time. It's a wonderful and beautiful camp there. And also be with our clergy at the clergy conference. And I came away just uh, really renewed and refreshed. We got a wonderful clergy here in the uh, state of Oklahoma, spread throughout the entire state, uh, really doing wonderful, wonderful work. And it was so wonderful to get to meet many of them. We also have a very wonderful candidate of the ordinary, Canon Eric, and a wonderful new bishop. Of course, we have met a couple of times uh, a few months ago, Bishop Paulson, and so I just really appreciate uh, the, all of their ministries. It's just been a wonderful uh, week, uh, refreshment and, re and renewal there at the clergy. So any birthdays or anniversaries this morning? Any birthdays or anniversaries? Here we come. All right. Birthday, birthday, birthday. 85, 85 years. 85. Wow. Fantastic, Kathleen. Wonderful. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. But. You're proud of it. Wonderful. <laughs> That's right. Well, let's uh, have a birthday prayer for these three wonderful ladies. Our birthday prayer is found on page 830, and it's prayer 51. Watch over that child, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And their hearts may they peace with passing understanding about all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on this birthday, I bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On your birthday, I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And on your birthday, I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Happy birthday to all of you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord, we bless this offering in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic prayer this morning begins on page 333. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and an institute, and his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that as precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for well, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dear beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make you before the divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son command us to make, having remembered his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the numerous benefits procured unto us by the same. We must humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we be them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire for the Father of goodness mercifully accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all the benefits of his passion. And here we offer present it to thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others we shall be partakers of this most holy communion. 
may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. May one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are worthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, and we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the union of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, war with that end. Amen. And now, as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feet. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Trusting in our righteous, the man of forward and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, a gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of the dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may more, more dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Yeah, we'll have our Eucharistic visitors come forward. And on the back of your bulletin there, we have uh, under Eucharistic visitors, we have our versicle response. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth, bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us, with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread and one cup. Amen. As you go forward this morning, please send our love to everybody that you visit. And God bless you guys. In your wonderful ministry of sharing Christ's love. So let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that us feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of the everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, we may continue that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou also prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world with that end. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes on understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remember with you always. Amen. Amen. And now, friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.